In the late 80s, the surge of handheld gaming became a very big thing for gamers, myself included. I remember when I first got my first Game Boy with Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins after getting a really good report card, and I instantly fell in love with the Game Boy. It was such a cool system, and we saw so many different handhelds released over time. Of course, Sega got into the market with the Sega Game Gear. You had the Atari Lynx as well. The Game Boy lineup continued on with things like the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance, and even Sony got involved with the PSP and the Vita and of course we got the Nintendo DS and 3D. But one handheld console I knew absolutely nothing about was the Wonderswan. I'd always seen people talk about the Wonderswan, but I never had one for myself. Obviously, it was only released in Japan. So unless you imported one of these things, I was never able to check out a Wonderswan. Well, recently a Wonderswan color popped up on a Facebook group that I'm in for a really cheap price and it was still in the box. And I thought to myself, you know what? It would be kind of cool to learn about this system. Check it out since it is a box system and just look at the history of the system and see what I think about it in 2019. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to check out my brand new, to me, Wonder Swan Color. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. The Wonder Swan was released by Bandai, now known as Bandai Namco, a company known in the 80s and 90s for a variety of toys, such as the ever-popular Tamagotchi, and releasing the infamous Family Fun Fitness, which Nintendo acquired the rights to and rebranded as the Power Pad. The Power Pad was used in games like Stadium Events, and of course led to your family members cheating while using it instead of trying to actually be athletic. Honestly, I can't say I really blame them though. In 1996, Bandai decided to try and take on the handheld console market, and a longtime Nintendo employee, Gunpa Yokoi, had recently left Nintendo. Bandai brought him on board to help develop what would be known as the Wonder Swan. If Gunpa Yokoi sounds familiar, he honestly should. Yokoi worked with Nintendo for 31 years and was a producer for games like the infamous Metroid on the NES. The two things that Yokoi was most known for, however, with Nintendo was the creation of two systems, the Game Boy and the Virtual Boy. The Game Boy is often credited as starting the surge of the handheld console market, allowing for cartridge games that were full-on experiences instead of cheap knockoff experiences to be available to play on the go. It was a global hit and it helped propel Nintendo into domination in the handheld market that still continues since the 30 years ago it was originally released. The Virtual Boy, well, that was a different story. VR was becoming a hot commodity in the 90s, and Nintendo's entry into the virtual console market was the Virtual Boy. Although it was proposed as a handheld system, it was big, bulky, and honestly not even really virtual reality at all, only displaying red and black colors. Still, with over 30 years of experience at Nintendo, Bandai brought Yokoi on to help create the Wonder Swan. Unfortunately, Yokoi never saw the release of the Wonder Swan, as he passed away in a tragic car accident in 1997, after rear-ending a car and being hit by a passing vehicle when inspecting the damage from the rear end. The Wonder Swan ended up releasing in March of 1999, and featured a monochrome display like the original Game Boy, even though the Game Boy Color was already available on the market. Bandai thought it would be successful anyways, though, with the promised 30 hours of battery life, a pretty sleek design, and a cheaper price point than the Game Boy Color. In December of 2000, the Wonder Swan Color was released and, once again, was at a cheaper price point than the Game Boy Advance which was looming on the horizon, but obviously the Game Boy Advance was a stronger unit. The final redesign of the Wonder Swan, the Swan Crystal, was released in July of 2002 and featured a superior screen to that of the other Wonder Swan models and a lower price point than the Game Boy Advance. Unfortunately though, the Swan Crystal just couldn't compete, and the Swan lineup of handhelds was terminated in 2003, after selling a cumulative 3.5 million handhelds in Japan and never seeing a US release. Now like I said, there were three versions of the Wonder Swan released, the Wonder Swan, the Wonder Swan Color, and the Swan Crystal. Now the Wonder Swan had its own library of games, and the Wonder Swan Color also had its own library of games. The Wonder Swan Color was also backwards compatible with the original Wonder Swan, much like the Game Boy Color and the original Game Boy. So you could play all of your original Wonder Swan games on your Wonder Swan Color, and of course there were exclusive games for the Wonder Swan Color. Now the Swan Crystal did not have any of its own unique games, as it was just an upgraded display that 
that was the main selling point of that system. Now the thing about the Wonderswan and Wonderswan Color Library is this system was known for RPGs. That's why it was somewhat successful in Japan because of a lot of great RPGs that came out for the system. But since the system never released in the States, none of these games are translated. So most of the really good games for the system are of course in Japanese only. And that makes importing kind of tough for a lot of titles. Looking over the list of titles that were recommended to import, most of these are pretty expensive. There was a couple that caught my eye, games like uh, Guilty Gear and Pocket Fighter, which was a version of Street Fighter, but these games were kind of expensive, so I did not want to plop down the money to get these games because, well, they're just very expensive for something that I'm probably not going to use a lot of. But one of the cool things about the Wonder Swan that I picked up is that it is the Final Fantasy edition of the Wonder Swan Color. Now, this was a remake of the original NES Final Fantasy with better graphics, more improved text, and a lot of other things added to this version of the game. And honestly, it was a pretty big deal when this thing released. Square was really interested in the Wonder Swan, and this was one of the Final Fantasy games that ended up coming to the Wonder Swan. So when I saw this, I was like, I kind of want to get this. You know, obviously, I'm not going to be able to play the game, but at least it'll look cool. It'll be cool to open it up and look at it and see what it's all about. Now I did pick up one import friendly title that was pretty cheap. I did get this boxed as well and that is Wonder Classic which is a golf game. So we're going to open up the Wonder Swan color system. We're going to open up Wonder Classic and take a look at these things because I'm kind of interested to see what they're all about. All right, so here's my brand new, to me at least, Final Fantasy Wonder Swan Color. Now, like I said, I picked this up on a Facebook group that I'm in for a really, really cheap price from Japan. So I was super stoked to check it out just because I really liked how it was a box system. I thought it looked really cool. Taking a look at the back of the box, you can see that we have some screenshots of the game. The game looks absolutely gorgeous. It definitely looks more like a 16-bit game. You have a lot of uh, text here. God only knows what that says. I only speak English. And most people would say I don't even speak it that well. But you can look at the box here. It's very nice. And then it has a flap where you can open it up. You have some beautiful artwork there. And then we have the system here and the game as well. So we're going to open this up and check it out. I have actually not even opened this up yet. So this is this is real deal stuff here folks this is the first unboxing of this system for me so i'll probably have to put some batteries in it all right and here is the wonder swan color it's a cool little it's a cool little system now i know that you have some games that you can actually hold it like this and play like shmup games like this so i think that's a really a really unique design. You can see that it is a white system. It has the D-pad. I guess I'm not sure if you can use both of the D-pads or you can choose which D-pad you want to use or whatnot, but it's a really cool looking system. We have the power button here. Yeah, I'm going to probably have to put some put some batteries in here. You have the B and A button. Taking a look at the back of the system, you have where you insert the cartridge and here is the battery slot. Let's see if we can figure out how to, I don't want to break it. Mm. Might have to might have to Google that real quick. <laughs> but looking here, oh, there's a little flap it seems like to release it. There we go. Now let's also take a look at the game that we got with it as well, which is Final Fantasy. It is a box copy. We also have the instruction book for the Wonder Swan color system, so that's that's pretty cool. And we have the Final Fantasy box here. I like the boxes, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty simplistic, but you know, they're clean, they're simple. And you know, that's all you really need with some of these box arts, really nice artwork on the back here. Good Lord. That's absolutely gorgeous. And then this is the Wonder Classic, the golf game that I got as well for the great of golf. I mean, that's a hell of a tagline right there, folks. And you can see the back of it, you have some images. Looks like a pretty clean looking golf game. Like obviously I'm not a big golfer or anything like that, but it is worth checking out. So let's go ahead and unbox a game here. And you can see we have the instruction booklet. Remember, remember these things, kitties? Instruction books, these were, these were awesome back in the day. Full color as well, very high quality paper. I really like this instruction booklet. And you have the cartridge here. Now what's interesting about the cartridge is that Obviously, you can see it has an exposed um, bottom here. Let's let the camera focus. It has an exposed bottom here, which I don't know. I'm not really a huge fan of that. Um, kind of interesting how it is clear as well. I'm not sure if the other game is like that. Let's check that out and see. Yeah, they're both clear cartridges. So that's 
that's pretty interesting. I guess the library had the clear cartridges so you could see what is in there. You can see that it is also open and exposed as well. But I'm going to throw a battery in here and we're going to try to get some footage, obviously off screen footage of the Wonderswan color in action. All right. So here is Wonder Classic. Now, I do want to clarify something real quick. The sound is actually on here and there's a couple different sounds that you can do. And the bottom little slider is actually for the color that is used, the brightness of the screen. Now, as you can see, I talked about how some of the games actually use the system sideways, and this game is actually one of them. So that's actually super cool because I'm able to show you guys, well, at least try to show you guys, how these sort of games worked on here. The screen itself, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely a product of the times. It is not a, it's not a great screen, but, you know, I would say for the time frame, it was probably pretty decent. As you can see, we just hit the ball there. The colors themselves, they, you know, they look pretty good, honestly. Um, there was no front light or back light on these systems. So, you know, if you're playing in the dark, you probably had to get a worm light. I'm sure there were some worm light like accessories on here. Decent little tune as well. Oh God, I messed that up. It's hard to play and try to film and keep everything so that you guys can see it as best as possible. But yeah, you know, a decent little golf game. And I definitely, I, I really like how it, oh, I sliced the hell out of that. I really like how it's a sideways game so that I could show you guys, you know, how this, how this works. Um, really, you're starting to see this sort of with the Nintendo Switch as well. Some of the games are starting to use the vertical mode. Um, and there's actually like stands coming out for it and stuff. There was a good shot, maybe. Into the sand trap? Oh yeah. But yeah, just wanted to give you guys a little feel for this game. I'm definitely, like I said, glad that it is, it is a vertical game. We're gonna check out a little bit of Final Fantasy as well, and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts on this thing. But so far, kinda cool, I mean, I gotta admit. Right, so here is Final Fantasy. We have a little intro cutscene here. You can see some of the colors that are used. It honestly looks pretty impressive for the time frame. Like, I think this looks better than some of the Game Boy Color games that we're releasing at the time. You know, there were some really good Game Boy Color RPGs. Of course, you had Game Boy Color games like Metal Gear Solid as well that were sort of pushing what the Game Boy was capable of. But this just looks, it looks really good. I think it would have been pretty successful potentially if it had come out stateside and it had a good library of games. You can hear that classic. Final Fantasy sound. It looks like somebody has tried to play this game. So we'll try their save file. Maybe we can get in a battle. Oh yeah, here we go. Just attack. No defense, just attack, baby. We can, we can survive this. I would actually be interested to play this if it was, um, if there was like a conversion, an English conversion for it, you know, I would probably play it on the Wonder Swan just to sort of check it out and get a feel for it. Because, you know, it, the first Final Fantasy game is, is obviously very iconic. It was a very important game as well, but it's a game that, you know, um, it was on the NES and NES RPGs like Final Fantasy. They're just kind of simplistic. But this obviously was redone. Sounds great. And I would like to play it on the Wonder Swan color. But unfortunately, there's probably no translation. But yeah, um, pretty impressive, honestly. Pretty, pretty impressive stuff out of this little bad boy. Um, I will show you the control for the screen so you can see how you can control it from the side here. And then, of course, the sound and the start button and the power button. So yeah, let me give you guys my final thoughts on this thing. Um, pretty neat little system, though. All in all, I think the Wonderswan library of systems is kind of cool. It's definitely a unique piece of video gaming history. Something that a lot of US gamers never got to experience because they didn't import it. And something that a lot of US gamers just don't know about. Like I said, I picked up this Wonderswan color for very cheap and I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. It's a really unique system, a really cool system and just something I wanted to talk about on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at me buying a Wonderswan in 2019. Let me know in the comments section down below if you own any of the three different Wonderswan Swan systems, what games you recommend that are hopefully cheap because a lot of the import games are very expensive, the ones that the US gamers want to check out because there's limited text in it. And as always, thank you guys for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.